Mindfulness is the reality that gives rise to words. Words are only a pale shadow of this reality. Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I want to talk to you about the process of mindfulness meditation also called Vipassana meditation. So what I'm going to give you today is a kind of how-to video on how to do Vipassana meditation as well as some pitfalls that might pop up in the meantime. Now to give you a brief explanation of what Vipassana meditation is, it's basically focusing on reality as it is. So you want to think about um, how often we might um, kind of sum things up and kind of put concepts over things. Like we might think, oh, you know, uh, I'm right now sitting on a chair. But to be honest, a chair is a concept. It's just, it just is. We've called it a chair. It becomes a symbol once we put that over it. So we're not experiencing the reality as it is, that it's just material shaped in a particular way. And so we do this with a lot of things and including ourselves. So what mindfulness is, is it completely detaching from any and all notions and concepts and focusing on reality as it is. Now the formal practice of mindfulness meditation, what you're doing is you're basically detaching from all concepts and thoughts and focusing your concentration on one particular point. Now most often uh, uh, practitioners of mindfulness meditation use the sensation of the breath on the tips of the nostrils. So when you are in meditation, you're focusing only on that. That way you can um, kind of get away from spare thoughts as they pop up. So if you're sitting there and you're focused on the breath and then all of a sudden a thought pops up, ooh, I want an ice cream cone, then you just bring your attention right back to the breath. But you might ask why meditate in the first place? Like what, um, what is meditation going to do for you? I mean, from the outside it seems like you're just sitting there. You're trying to maybe stop thought, even though that's not what you're doing in mindfulness meditation. There are some types of meditation where you are trying to actively stop thought. Um, basically, the reason why you want to practice meditation is because what it does is it allows you to be more conscious of your thoughts. It allows you to expand your consciousness down somewhat into your subconscious region. And in that, you're able to work out uh, some of the psychological traumas and stresses that you've accumulated throughout your life. Because what you find is that the brain is kind of a self-correcting mechanism. The mind is kind of a self-correcting mechanism. And if you don't get in its way by putting thoughts on top of it or by trying to distract yourself from it in some way, that it naturally works itself out. It's kind of like how the eye is a self-cleansing mechanism. The mind is also the same way. So if we bring our body and our mind into a state of stillness, then our issues sort of naturally work themselves out. And what happens is you're able to be more in the moment and you're able to be more present and satisfied in normal reality. And you're also expanding your consciousness so you're becoming more aware of what is. All right, but let's get down to the practice. So first I wanna to talk to you guys about the positions that you put your body in. Now, ultimately, the position of your body doesn't really matter because it is a mental technique. However, there are some positions that are more beneficial because if you're sitting for a long period of time, you don't want um, to be drowsy and you don't also want to be uncomfortable or having to move around a lot. So you want to pick some positions that are going to allow you to keep your spine straight, which will not only keep you awake, it'll also keep you comfortable and keep you from having like back pain later on. Uh, so there are a couple, like you could sit um, crisscross applesauce. It's not the most solid uh, position, but it will allow you to keep your spine straight. It would be great for a short period of time to sit in that position. Um, you might also try half lotus, which is the one that I prefer. Basically in half lotus, you put both of your legs out in front of you and you take your right leg and you place it on your left thigh with your, uh, the soles of your feet pointing up toward the ceiling. And then the other one you tuck underneath. 
So you could also do it the, on the opposite side too, but basically you have one leg on top of the other and then the other one tucked underneath. Now the full lotus position, I actually don't know how to do yet because that takes some flexibility, but this is by far the most solid position that you could be in for meditation. What you do, you start out with your legs out in front of you again. You're going to place your right leg on top of your left thigh and so that your foot is pointing up toward the ceiling and then you're going to do it the same with the left leg and you're going to place it on your right thigh with the sole of your feet pointing up toward the ceiling. So these are just a few. Now if you can't do any of these that's fine too. You just sit in a chair, make sure you keep your back up straight and you can um, just try to stay as solid in that position as possible and just take breaks if you need to take breaks. Uh, again uh, meditation isn't about the physical position that you're sitting in, so essentially you could pick any particular position. These are just the most solid and the best for keeping yourself awake. Alright, so once you get into the right position, um, then you're going to start to practice your meditation. And I recommend starting off um, sort of with a smaller uh, window for practice, so maybe 15 to 20 minutes would be uh, plenty of time for a beginner. And what you're going to do is you're going to focus your attention on the tips of your nostrils. Um, and just the sensation of the breath going in and out. So you're focusing on the actual sensation and not the breath itself because since the breath moves in and out you're going to be constantly switching your point of focus in order to keep up with your breath. It'll be in the nose and then you'll be down in the lungs and down in the belly. You know you want to keep it just on one spot because the more focused you can be the more uh, the better you're going to be at this. So you breathe in and you breathe out and you really get that focus and if you find your thoughts are straying to something else, you just bring it right back to the breath. Now oftentimes thoughts like, oh, I'm no good at this, or what's the point in doing meditation anyway will pop up, or maybe I haven't been meditating. Don't worry, as long as you're keeping your focus on the breath and as long as you keep pulling your uh, mind back, you are being mindful and thus you are meditating. So if you lose your concentration, the mindfulness aspect is actually more important. The fact that you're becoming mindful of being distracted and pulling your focus back to the breath actually shows that you're making some progress. So when it comes to mindfulness meditation or any other practice, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you set a schedule. This is something that you want to do every single day and you want to work it into your schedule. So if you do 15 minutes, 15 minutes every day and you'll start to see some real, um, some real results. If you do it here and there, you probably won't see a lot of results. Now, the results that you see from meditation are generally very gradual anyway, and so you don't want to rush it. You don't want to go into this with a goal mindset. You want to just simply be sitting there uh, in your still position, disengaged from the body, disengaged from the mind, simply focused on that one single point of focus. And as long as you keep pulling your attention back to that single point, then you are going to be successful in meditating. So don't worry about, oh, I want to reach this goal or go into meditation with any other lofty goal because that will work in the exact opposite direction. It will keep getting distracted and trying to check yourself and trying to check your progress, like, am I really meditating? Now these thoughts will come up anyway. You know, uh, when it comes to focusing on the breath, it sounds like it would be super simple to do, but you're going to get distracted. You're going to fail many, many times. But as long as you keep becoming mindful and putting the focus back on the breath, then you are absolutely meditating and you are absolutely doing it the right way. Well, that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that this illuminated something to you about the process of Vipassana meditation. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, just go ahead and post them below in the comment section. If you like the video, go ahead and click the like button and hit the subscribe button below. Other than that, that's all I have for you today, and until next time, keep becoming more you. Thank you.